place. I am Professor Eugene Racer, uh, AKA Professor E Racer. I got that nickname because I'm pretty quick. Hoo ha! With the eraser. Oh, excuse me, that's a, a lot of dust. Anyway, today we're gonna play a fun game that's gonna test your memory skills and my skills with the eraser. It's quite simple. I'll read you a Bible verse, give you a few seconds to study it, then erase something. Your job is to shout out what's missing. Easy enough, right? That's what I thought. Okay, let's get started. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1-1. Study this verse carefully, because I'm about to erase the last word. Okay, you've got 10 seconds. Shout out the last word if you know what it is. Time's up. Who said Earth? You're correct. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Well done. Well, let's try another verse. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5. Everybody got it? Oh, good, because now I'm going to erase three words. Okay, you've got 10 seconds again. Shout out the missing words. Time's up. Who said all your heart? Nice job. You were paying attention. The verse says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. All right, let's see what the next verse is. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. Study this verse carefully because I'm about to erase the book and verse number. Okay, 10 seconds on the clock. Shout out the book and verse number if you know what it is. Time's up! Who said Romans 3.23? Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Good work, everyone. All right, it is now time for the final verse of the day. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. Study this verse very carefully, because I'm about to erase three words. Okay, you've got 10 seconds. Shout out the missing words if you remember what they are. up. Did everyone say Jesus is Lord? If so, you're correct. Those were the three words missing from the verse which says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Well done, everyone. Your memory was put to the test today, but I give you all a passing grade. Now, <laughs> if you'll excuse me, I need to get some fresh air. I think I've been breathing in just a little too much chalk dust. Oh, oh wait, Frank, take me back. Take me back, no. Frank, please. I, I know you want to go home, but please, please take me back. It, it won't be long. I just need to talk to my friends, okay? Please take me back. Great. Thank you. That, right here to the camera. It yeah, it's that black thing over there. Hey, space friends, you know what no one reminded me about space travel? That's right. Aliens. Aliens, go figure. Alien? That's right, Frank. You are an alien. Hey, listen, they're not as scary as you might think. And this is Frank. Well, I like to call him Frank. Say hi, Frank. Hi, Frank. See, and, and they're actually really nice. And they're pretty strong. This week, I'm taking initiative and trying to help Frank go home. Frank, go That's right, Frank. Home. Phone home. So, do you remember what initiative is? That's right. Initiative is seeing what needs to be done and doing it. Initiative? Good job, Frank. It's not just astronauts in space who need initiative. 
you and I need initiative to take care of the things that need to be done in our world, in our everyday places. With God's help, we can be on the lookout and see how we can meet the needs around us. Then we can do something about them. Frank's excited to go home and, and I'm helping him stay focused Frank, on his yeah, plan. Kind of like our story today. So we're continuing our story about Nehemiah and the initiative it took to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. The wall was beginning to take shape, but unfortunately there were people in the lands around Jerusalem who weren't so thrilled about Nehemiah's building project. They knew that if the walls of Jerusalem were rebuilt, the Jewish people would be able to defend themselves once again. And there were two men in particular who were working against Nehemiah and the people of Israel. Their names were Sanballat and Tobiah. Sanballat and oh, Good job, Frank. You're learning this English thing. So they, you could say they weren't very nice. And they tried to keep Nehemiah from working on the wall. But Nehemiah had to stay focused. So hang out with us today as we see how he did just that. Now, I need to stay focused as if I can help Frank get home. Hey, Frank, why don't we keep going over there? There's a guy over there to let us use his phone, okay? Frank, That's right. phone home. Frank, phone home. All right, I'll catch you in a little bit, guys. Frank, phone home. Space travelers, it is I, Jacob, and I'm here to take you to the very edge of the universe, or at the very least, the very edge of initiative. Initiative is seeing what needs to be done and doing it. Initiative is very important. Too often we see what needs to be done and we don't do it, usually because flashing red light. Red light, what could that mean? I'll have to check. The Space Travel Manual. Red lights. Ah, 
red light. Computer malfunction alarm. To reset computer, press the blue button. Okay, good. Where was I? Ah, uh, yes, initiative. I was saying that sometimes we see what needs to be done, but then we don't do it because a blue flashing light. Blue light, blue light, blue light, blue light. Clogged toilet. To unclog, press the orange button. That'll do the trick. <laughs> Man, it's really hard to focus around here. What I was saying was, a flashing orange light? Okay. Orange light, orange light. In today's story, we'll hear more about Nehemiah rebuilding the wall around Jerusalem. A really difficult job. Orange light. Got it. Whew. I hope Nehemiah doesn't lose focus. Oh man, what could that alarm be? Oh, I just got a text message. See you in a few. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Nehemiah, Chapters 2, 4, and 6. When Nehemiah traveled to Jerusalem and surveyed the broken down walls, he saw immediately what had to be done. We must rebuild. God moved the hearts of the people to join him. Let's get started. Hooray! But while the Jewish people were eager to repair the tumbled down walls and ruined gates, the people in the lands around them were not so thrilled. Uh, what do they think they're doing? A city with no walls stood open to attack. The people inside could never become a strong nation. The enemies of the Jews knew that if the wall of Jerusalem was rebuilt, the Jewish people might become a powerful enemy. They must cease and desist. Sanballat, a Horonite, and Tobiah, an official from Ammon, marched right up to the place where the people gathered to begin work. Pathetic. What a ragtag group. Why bother to even start? You shall never finish. Plus, the king is gonna think you're trying to take over. Nehemiah kept his cool. The God of heaven will give us success. We serve him. So we'll start rebuilding the walls. <laughs> Good luck with that. Nehemiah and the Israelites didn't need luck. They needed God's help. It was true that a few of the Jewish people were builders. Let's see. We've got priests, nobles, goldsmiths, perfume makers, farmers, grape growers, shepherds, any stonemasons. Well, let's get organized. Where he could, Nehemiah assigned each family group to work on a section of the wall closest to their home. Eliashib, you and the other priests will rebuild the sheep gate, then, Work on the wall up to the Tower of the Hundred. On it! Hassanah's family, I want you to work on the fish gate, lay its beams, and repair the doors with metal bolts and bars. We've got this! Nehemiah continued to give each family or group a part of the wall to rebuild. Old and young, men and women, they put everything they had to gather the fallen stones and hewing beams. In a short time, the wall began to rise again. Inconceivable! Sanballat and Tobiah were shocked to see the Jews actually making progress. They would mock the work to anyone who would listen. Do those Jews think they can make the wall new in a single day? Preposterous! 
The stones are all scattered and piled up like garbage. I suppose an itty bitty fox tried to climb up on that excuse for a wall. <laughs> ah! The whole thing would fall down. <laughs> Once again, Nehemiah ignored the heckling. Instead, he prayed as he worked. God, please listen to our prayer. Some people hate us. They're saying bad things about us. Don't hide your eyes from their guilt. With a burst of energy, the people worked even harder until the wall was half as high as it needed to be. Preposterous! Time for some action. Tobiah and Samballot began to plot with the surrounding nations to attack Jerusalem before the wall could be finished. We must set guards, day and night. Even with guards in place, enemies threatened. The Jews were exhausted. There's rubble everywhere, and our enemies say that no matter where we are, they'll attack. Nehemiah refused to be distracted. He stationed families at the weakest parts of the walls, armed with swords, spears, and bows. Don't be afraid. Fight for your families. From that day, everyone carried their weapons, even as they worked. If you hear the sound of the trumpet, run to join us. God will fight for us. Nehemiah and the Jews worked from the very first light of sunrise until the stars came out at night. At last, the wall itself was finished. It's full height. All the gaps are filled. Yeah! Yeah! But we can't rest yet. The entrance gate still must be repaired. Sanballat was furious, but he had another play to make. So he sent a message to Nehemiah, who was working high on the wall. Sanballat says, come, let's talk with one another. Let's meet in one of the villages on the plain of Ono. Oh no, I don't think so. Nehemiah knew perfectly well they were planning to harm him, but he stayed focused on the work and sent his own messenger to Sanballat. Nehemiah says, I am working on a huge project. Why should the work stop while I leave it? Why should I go down and talk with you? Inconceivable! Try again. Five times, Sanballat sent messages. He even threatened to tell the Persian king that Nehemiah was trying to make himself king. Tell Sanballat you're just making that up. Oh, I'll have to send another message. Guy, time for our new strategy. Sanballat made one last desperate attempt. He hired a man named Shemaiah to make Nehemiah look bad with his own people. Nehemiah, some men are coming at night to kill you. Let's go hide in the temple and lock the doors. Nehemiah knew that God had not sent Shemaiah. Should a man like me run away? No, I won't go. Once again, Nehemiah saw through the tricks of his enemies. Instead of hiding away and looking foolish, he trusted God and doubled down on the work. On the 52nd day of work, the wall and gates were finished. No! The wall had been finished in record time by a group of ordinary everyday people. It was clear to everyone that God had helped Nehemiah and the Jews stay focused and finish strong. Can't talk now, gotta focus. Sorry about that. It's so easy to get distracted sometimes, isn't it? I mean, you probably don't get distracted by alarms and flashing lights, because... But there are a lot of things that can distract you. When you're supposed to be focusing on homework, you might get distracted by the TV or the internet. When you're supposed to be cleaning your room, you might end up playing with your toys. When you're supposed to be listening to your teacher, you're making funny faces at your friends. We get distracted by our stuff, by other people, even by our own thoughts and worries. There's so many things fighting for our focus. It can be overwhelming. I mean, look at Nehemiah. He was rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. He had enemies on the outside and people fighting with each other on the inside. It would have been so easy for him to get distracted, but he stayed focused. I mean, look at Jesus. There were a lot of things that could have distracted Jesus from doing what he came here to do. But 
he stayed focused on what was most important, saving the world and making it possible for us to have a relationship with God. Staying focused isn't always easy, but when you focus, you can get things done quicker and better. So, the one thing to remember today is this. Stay focused on what needs to be done. If you need help, take a minute or two to talk to God before you have something you need to focus on and try to steer clear of the things that can distract you. I'm putting you on silent. And when in doubt, consult the space travel manual, if you have one. What do all the lights mean? All the lights, all the lights, all the lights, all the lights. Oh. Dance party. Wow, what a powerful story. Nehemiah and the people, they could have felt overwhelmed by all the work they had to do in Jerusalem and by the challenges they had to face as well, especially when they had to deal with Sanballat and Tobiah trying to distract them. But they didn't back down. They stayed focused on the job that they had to do. Remember, God is strong and faithful. He can give us strength as we do the work that he's called us to do. We can trust God no matter what. When we remember that, we can stay focused on what needs to be done. Hey everyone, if we're not careful, we can get distracted from doing things like homework or chores around the house because we'd rather play video games and watch TV than do what we're supposed to do, right? So we can start to lose focus when we feel worried or even afraid. Sometimes we can be distracted by people who try to get us to do something we know that we shouldn't do. It's not always easy to stay focused on what needs to be done. But remember, we can always ask God for help. He's with us today and every day. And that reminds us of our memory verse for this month in Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Say it with me, okay? It says this, Work at everything you do with all your heart. Work as if you were working for the Lord. I love this. See, this week we need to stay focused on what needs to be done and work on it with all of our heart. And with God's help, we can do that. So this week, guys, I want you to have a great, fun week. And I'll see you next week as we finish up our series, Ready for Launch. All right, guys, see you later. God bless. Bye, everyone. Oh, there, I'm MC Haggis, the world's greatest Scottish rapper. And this year is my beatboxing partner, Seamus McFamous. Say hi to him, Seamus. Okay, all right. Hey. All right, all right, get back to work, get back to work. So, this month we're learning about initiative, seeing what needs to be done, and doing it. And right now, whoo! Seamus is taking some publicity photos for me because I've been nominated for Scottish Rapper of the Year. <laughs> Other Scottish rappers who have won this award are Mick Eminem, Lil Kilt, and the glorious B.A.G. Pipes. Word is, I'm the front runner this year, so these pictures are important. Seamus, what are you doing? You're getting in the way of the vibe here. Come on, go back there and start taking pictures. What are you, what are you doing? What, no, no, you're blocking my light. You're either, either with me or you're against me. Why are you making an impression of an iguana biting a fly? What are you doing? What are you, brushing, you're brushing your teeth? What are you, no, don't put your finger near my mouth. What are you doing? Aye. Aye. Your, your teeth. Aye. Your teeth? Aye. My teeth. Aye. What, what, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you talking about? <gasps> wait a minute. There's spinach in my teeth? Uh, Seamus, is this why you were talking? Oh! Oh, there's a lot. Is that, mm, mm, that's good. Is that what you were trying to tell me this entire time? Hi! Oh, thank you so much, Seamus. You know what? You saw what needed to be done. And you did it. And you told me. Uh, thank you so much. Let's rap about it. Kick it! <laughs>
A quality we need to help us live is one that is most determinative. Whether weak or strong or sensitive, we all need to practice seeing what needs to be done and doing it, and that's called initiative. Word. <laughs> I can't thank you enough for telling me that I had spinach in my teeth. I know that couldn't have been easy, but you took the initiative. You took the initiative. Yeah. You took the initiative. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and as we know, there's nothing more embarrassing than food in your teeth, am I right? Yeah, all right. Here we go. All right, let's take some more pictures, all right? Hey, look at me. Oh, um, what are you doing? You're, you're, st you're not taking any pictures. No, what, what are you doing? Stop it, stop it. What are you doing? What's wrong with you? Do I got more spinach in my teeth? 